So every day I want to record in case you couldn't come or in case you want to go back over it again, right? Um, so, and then I post it on a YouTube channel. Uh, the channel is Dr. Martha Catherine Beck Philosophy, or I guess it's Martha Catherine Beck PhD Philosophy. And then it has a playlist, RPH 140 World Philosophies Spring 2022. And then I number each class. So it, it will have class number one, two, whatever. Um, all right, so um, we're, the way I do it, it's uh, called a flipped classroom, I think, or else it's just traditional liberal arts education is a seminar, you know, where students engage in a lot of conversation, dialogue. So the ancient view of wisdom is um, you gain wisdom through reflection and talking to other people about life. You read, you have experiences, you um, reflect on your experiences, you talk to other people about their reflections on experience, you try to understand patterns in yourself, in the society, in the natural world, because you're trying to um, live the good life, right? And so wisdom, ancient wisdom always involved that you're some kind of a macrocosm in the microcosm, right? Your, your mind should somehow reflect the universe, what's actually out there, the physical universe, the biological universe, and the, the cultural universe that you live in. But if you're wise, you're also a good critique of where you think your culture has gotten corrupted or perverted, all right? Now, so psychological training, training of your psyche is training you so that you, you can map your mind, right? So that you have that perspective in the things that you do. Um, but you will, we're gonna learn about how the Western cultural tradition has changed over time. So that is not the dominant model. Um, and so you can decide for yourself what you think. I do not um, at all want you to try and please me, right? If you start asking, what, is, what do you want? What does she want? Then you're in trouble. <laughs> so what I want you to do first, and um, Alicia did this, right? She wrote this little essay, what is a healthy psyche? Right, Alicia? That's the, that's the first assignment. And she can, when I finally stop babbling, she can uh, repeat what she said. But every single reading after that gives you another view of the nature of the psyche and a healthy psyche. And then you have to think about that, whether you want to include that in your view or whether you completely reject that. There's no way you're going to accept all of them because they really disagree with each other. So it forces you or what I want is for you to start thinking critically about, well, what, I, what do I think is a healthy psyche? Um, I think a lot of, I, I'm not sure, but I suspect a lot of psychology tells you about what's unhealthy, you know, about mistakes people make or abnormal psychology, but they don't have a lot of as much commitment about what's a healthy psyche. And I, the reason for that is in the modern world, um, people started recognizing that cultures are different, right? It became more international and they went to moral relativism. Like, I don't know, everybody has their own opinion about a healthy psyche. Well, but wait a sec. <laughs> Um, the, the Greeks, 
Because the ancients thought greed is unhealthy, okay? Greed pits people against each other. It um, corrupts your psyche. It distracts you from what's important. It prevents you from being able to be reflective. So they have some values, right? That greed is psychologically unhealthy, culturally unhealthy. It separates us from the natural world. Uh, it's a universal value. So the ancients had some universal values, but they also had some biases which really need to be flushed out and exposed. So some, I mean, my own view is that uh, most of the views I teach, either I'm glad I know them because they explain things I need to know about how other people think or about how the culture is set up, or, um, they expand my view. It just makes my view more complex. And I understand people better. I understand myself better. Um, so just having one point of view is going to itself kind of warp your psyche after a while because it's too narrow. Um, so you start out with, with writing a short, well, 200 word essay, what is a healthy psyche? And then um, you keep developing that. So here's the way the class works. Um, I'll do a screen share and I'll give you, show you the, um, so I invited you on to Google Classroom. Is everybody on Google Classroom? Warren and Ivy? Are you okay? Um, let me see, I have you under people. Um, okay, so Warren, did you see the invitation? Yes, I saw it earlier today. I'll get onto it as soon as possible. Okay, all right, so here we are. And we have, um, here is the process by which you go through the class. I have office hours in the evening because I have classes at that time because I thought I was going to teach this class in Bangladesh as a joint class. Um, but if you want to meet for office hours at different times than that, um, you can let me know. So Ivy and Warren just disappeared. Oh, are you there? OK is, oh, Ivy, I see, I remember Ivy. You yeah, I'm here, I'm here. Actually, Ivy, you shouldn't, I mean, you're you're fine, really. I mean, I, I don't want you to be self-conscious, but I mean, my face is bigger than yours, <laughs> right? I mean, I would really love to be able to look you in the eye, unless, you know, somehow that's just really unpleasant for you. Um, okay, Warren, but you did. Yes, I'm here. I'm, I'm getting onto the Google Classroom thing right now. That is why. It's oh, closed. okay. Okay. Yes. So there's the catalog description. Everything is on. Oh, that's not true. I have some books for you to order. Um, I'm sorry. Are they on the, um, are they on the bookstore, Alicia? I think I ordered them. That's right, Alicia. I ordered all the books and they're on the, uh, your, your microphone isn't on. Can't you read my lips to understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? <laughs> um, the only one that wasn't on the college bookstore was Sojourner Truth. Right, okay. So yeah, the college bookstore has all the books. And then there's the life of Sojourner Truth also. I um, would, I would uh, what was the new, the new physics? What's the name of that book? God and the New Physics. That one, I am still waiting on them to fulfill, like they don't have it. So if y'all can, you might want to try to get that from somewhere else, because I still don't have that book. Well, have they charged you for it, Alicia? It's been charged, but if they're not able to 
satisfy the order or to fulfill the order, they'll refund it. Well, why don't you just ask for a refund? Because in Bangladesh, they just break copyright routinely <laughs> because nobody has any money. So I have it scanned and it isn't a whole lot. It isn't a huge percent of the book. So and that um, probably wouldn't infringe on the copyright, I don't think. I think for instruction, you're allowed to use a certain amount, aren't you? Well, certainly the gods know that I'm not making any money on this. So, <laughs> but on the other hand, they don't make money if I don't order it. But some of these books are so old, I don't think anyone is expecting anyone to order them at this point. Um, so anyway, no, there is a list of books for you, Warren. Um, I think I might be added into the wrong class because in Schoology, um, it shows up that I'm in Chinese philosophy. All right. Um, I invited you into my classroom, so. Um, On Schoology, I have one that says Chinese philosophy. Oh, also. oh, here's the issue. It's not, it's not Schoology, it's Google Classroom. No, I know. I, yes, I understand that. But also on Schoology, it's not showing up as, as this class name. It's showing up as Chinese philosophy. Well, it's I'm not on Schoology. Mm -hmm. So can Warren, you... that's probably just the way that Lion College listed it. Because okay, so just like a placeholder are... to say it's for um, Dr. Mick's class. Okay, yeah, I understand. Yeah, there are three different classes that start with RPH370. So they might have just put it under the under the Chinese philosophy. Yeah, because okay, they're all topics classes. Does that mean can you get can you get into my class? I should be able to. Yeah. I should Alicia, be. Once it's Alicia once I did. find the email, I should be able to. Okay. Alicia did and Ivy did. And we're gonna call Ivy Ivy. <laughs> right. That's um. Anyway, so there, there are books to um, order, but God and the New Physics, you can just skip and I'll send you the scan. Um, there's honor code. These are all standard in every one of your um, syllabi. So I think that's okay. So my classes want you to focus on reading and learning how to connect what you read to other things and learning how to think it. You're not just trying to memorize data, right? It's not data driven. It's the readings are reflective. You have to reflect on them. You have to synthesize, connect what we've done, both applying it to your life and reacting in relation to the other uh, readings. So it's a higher order level of, of critical, critical reading. Then there's writing papers, just the general thesis and argument. And I'll show you the paper uh, rubric. Yeah, Alicia, you can take a break because she knows this. She's had a number of classes with me. So I'm if you want to make some tea, I've got some licorice tea that will help my throat, but I'll still yeah, be okay. Okay. And then um, there's oral communication. So at various points in the class, when you have a paper due, you have to give a formal presentation and that gets graded. And then the content of the papers over time, it should get more complex, more complete, more creative. Um, so for example, um, I have a little worksheet about a, how complex is a thesis? So there's a dialogue, by Plato where Euthyphro is talking to Socrates, right? Well, you could have your thesis be Euthyphro disagrees, Euthyphro and Socrates disagree about what piety is. Well, yeah, that's just <laughs> obvious. Or you can have a thesis that goes all the way up to um, the disagreement between Euthyphro and Socrates is important because they lead to two completely different ways of life, which affects a culture in, in ways that either lead to authoritarianism or preserve democracy. 
all right, that's a more complex thesis. Would you agree? Does everybody understand that some thesis statements are a lot more yeah. complicated? Yeah. And so, um, and they're more creative and you can identify with them. Um, and sometimes a student will have a really simple thesis, but they'll prove it pretty well. They'll have all the technical stuff in order. Sometimes they have a really creative thesis, but they didn't articulate it quite as well because it was you know, harder to think about. Um, and I try to acknowledge that. And I try to even favor going out on a limb, right? And trying to think for yourself and apply things in your own way. So I, you definitely have to learn the technical stuff about writing a paper, um, but I do like to encourage you to take some risks and think outside of the box. Um, in philosophy, I don't say that we think outside of the box. What I say is, I don't see any box. Where's a box? <laughs> So to me, I went into philosophy because to me, it is the ultimate discipline for having a free mind, okay? You can start anywhere. You can have any opinion about a, a healthy psyche and then take it from there. Does that seem fair, Alicia? Yeah, uh, have you seen The Matrix? the whole thing is about freeing your mind and how human reality is simply a computer program <laughs> and you can take a blue pill and stay you know locked into the program or a red pill and free your mind and become an independent you know outside of the program anyway um there is a scene in there where a child is talking to the one like the supreme being um who's trying to learn to expand his mind and use all parts of it. And she says, you can't bend the spoon. That's impossible. Just simply remember that there is no spoon. Oh, good. So, yeah, I just, it reminded me of that. But yeah, guys, she, Dr. Beck is not gonna like tear y'all's papers apart. She's really, really, really just looking for effort you know, show that you are thinking and there's no right or wrong thought. It's your thought. And the whole point about writing these reflections is that it helps you build upon the thought so that when you get to your final paper, you know more about your own mind. It's, have y'all had a class with Dr. Beck before? So, I mean, don't be intimidated. I was, I, Dr. Beck, I was super like, when I took my first class with you, I was like, uh, because it was a lot, it was intense, but you'll get a whole, whole lot out of it, so. Yeah, actually, Alicia, I mean, went to a higher level, right? During that class and never came down. <laughs> so that's really nice. Uh, that's fun to watch. Um, so, well, let me ask, uh, Ivy, what year are you and what's your major? I'm a junior art major. Oh, okay. I teach philosophy of art. My mother taught art history and I was exposed to a lot of art as a kid. Um, and do you want to, why do you like art? I'm curious. Why are you an art major? I feel like I have a um, hard time expressing myself and I'm a vi very visual person. So I feel like by making or creating art is the best way to get my point or mark across. And if at the end, I only make one good piece that leaves like maybe a sum of what I hope to do with my life or, you know, some what I'm trying to say, yeah. Well, I mean, all I can say is um, in my lifetime, there's been so much more art by non-white European people. And it, it's wonderful. I think of it 
I think privileged white people have had their say and they should just shut up and listen and pay attention because it's these other people who are moving up and they had authentic experiences of uh, you know, suffering and triumphing. It's just more real to me. And um, so, I mean, I, I'm all in on that. Um, I, I really enjoy listening and watching and seeing what, well, for example, rap music. I had a student who, have you ever heard of Black Star? They were a rap group, an early rap group, but the leader of it, his mother was an anthropologist. And the, in the African tribes, they had a, a storyteller. It isn't just Africa, it's, it's everywhere. There was a storyteller because before writing, that was the only way to keep the history going, right? You literally needed a history and it was oral, it was, connected to music so you could remember it. it was connected to drama you know as much body stuff as you could so it would make an imprint and so he invented this rap group and the rapper is the storyteller right and so that was a way another way for african americans to tell their story and i remember when i first was exposed to it i thought it's really important because there was all this la la land, you know, America is la la land and everything was good and peachy keen and rap music comes along and says, no, you know, there's a dark side. You're, you're leaving out stuff and you're, and it's leading to this kind of legitimate rage, right? So it was rage that was legitimate rage and it was trying to wake people up to the need for social justice. And then it gets corrupted by power and money and sex, just like every other thing. But now there's another branch of it. I don't know if you know, the public radio has gotten into this, where there's a lot of um, music, rap music coming out of prisons. Prisoners are creating it. And it's just, again, the same mission, which is, wait a sec, look, look at what you're creating do is this really what we want? Have you do you know about that, Ivy? Uh, yeah, I know um, a lot of people who've gone to prison. They uh, make their own rap music, but there's also artists like uh, Joyner Lucas. I don't know if you've ever heard of him, but he does a lot of. Um, what is it? It's about his stance being uh, black and what he thinks like people should know about it. I feel like that is a very good um, point. Yeah, there was nothing by black women when I was your age. I don't think there was anything published. So I started reading it much later. Um, and now of course there's a lot, which is really good. Um, but anyway, I like the arts and the, I there's a young African-American student who is working with pottery with the pottery teacher and he makes the most beautiful things do you know who he is i can't remember his name are you talking about jamie i've had his classes like my yeah. entire uh, yeah, existence jamie. at lion but one yeah. of his students is particularly into this pottery can't remember his name anyway he's made are you talking things. about nicholas mcdonald I think so. Yeah, and he's really good into pottery. He won a scarf award last year, I think. Yeah, I was it's probably him. He does a lot of um, big pieces. Yeah, and he was he was doing a display of his work on that what Friday night out on the town or whatever that was. Anyway, uh, I like I like Jamie's work and I like his work. My mother, again, pottery was a big thing. We ate off of pottery dishes when I was growing up, which I think is really healthy because it brings you back to the earth. Um, anyway, so Warren, what about you? What's your year and what's your major? I'm a senior and my major is psychology. Okay, 
So Alicia also is a psych major. Yeah, so why did you want to? What? We've had a few classes together. Yeah. Why did you want to go into psychology? Um, as my classmate just said, she's an expressive person. I also am uh, an expressive person, but I would like to know why people express the way, why people express themselves the way they choose to. So to like understand the mind and because we know people learn in different ways and they choose to say things different ways. So I would like to know why is that so? Like, why do they do this this way? So okay. the expression is good, but I want to know why they chose this way. Like, I would want to understand their mind, how they see the world and why they see it that way. Okay, good. Um, Alicia, why don't you say why you want to go into psychology? Well, I just want to be able to help people. I'm 40 years old, guys, so I've lived half of my life now. And I've been through a lot of things. I have six kids. I'm married um, to my second husband. So I've been divorced as well. You know, I've lost my parents and my grandparents. And through all of this, something has to come out of it, you know. And that's kind of ties in to today's, some of today's reading. Suffering is a part of life. But we tend to forget that we're suffering and we're just, oh, well, it's just one more thing. It's just, that's just the way it is. That's just the facts of life. But the thing is, it doesn't have to be that way. That's why I went in, I'm, I'm a double major in uh, psychology and philosophy because it doesn't have to be that way. Those don't have to be the facts of life. And if I can help people to see that and find the strength within themselves, to change the facts of their lives, that's what I want to be able to do. Okay, good. Um, and actually, you know, I, I, philosophy to me has saved my life. I don't know how people get through life <laughs> without, you know, these ideas that I've had, but obviously they do, <laughs> most people do. But anyway, um, so it's good, everybody has, everybody's in it for has a sense of calling or a sense of meaning and so that's I think we read about psychology uh Carl Jung everybody has to have a sense of purpose or they're psychologically unhealthy right they're they're not going to be happy and so we can all agree on that all right so we have all the technical stuff about the papers and then with religion and philosophy, you have some idea of what it means to use your reason, your reasoning skills, and some idea of faith or the human good or a healthy psyche, right? So there's some union of that in each of your papers. It's the mission of Lyon College. And then um, there's also the qualities of an educated person. And so these are the five qualities. Um, I want your papers to reflect this. Intellectual honesty, that you admit what you know, what you don't know. Commitment to truth. There are healthier and less healthy ways to train your psyche. Fairness to opposing points of view, because these people disagree. Patience with complexity and ambiguity and tolerance of reasoned dissent. So it has to be reasoned. Um, so my, my granddaughter has her math class in about 10 minutes. So um, let's see, I need to, so why don't you, Oh, you can't move this. Okay, so student learning, teaching strategy, attendance, the nature of the class. This is the process. Um, Alicia, do you think you could take over at this point for a minute about the posts and stuff? And I need to feed her too, or to ask her what she wants. So when she gets to her 
tablet that she can eat. Last time she ate while she was in school. So, okay, thanks. Okay. Um, Alish, um, yeah, I was about to say, if y'all want your cameras off while she's gone, that's fine with me. I'll talk to a blank square. Um, as far as the posts go, if when you're reading, take notes on what you read. When she's lecturing, take notes on the lecture. And then for the post, you should have, I don't know, two or three things from your own reading and from the lecture that stood out to you. And you'll include those things in your post and why they stood out to you. And what were there any questions that the reading, you know, brought up to you? Um, what were those questions? And those questions can help start the discussion of the next class. If we were doing it in person, we would break into groups and have a group discussion. But that just kind of gets everybody's minds going, not just the way their own mind would normally go, but Warren, your questions can make me think more along the lines you're thinking on and the same for Ivy. Um, so in your posts and I think, did we decide to meet two times a week or three? I think we're gonna meet twice a week. Okay. From 11.45 to one, approximately. Okay. So let's see. Yeah, you're going to do one post a week. Um, it'll be due on the Friday at noon. Um, it'll be due on the Friday at the end of that week. So you should have like three different sections. So one for your, your comments for Monday, your comments for Tuesday or Wednesday, and your comments for Friday. Each with what you got from the lecture and what you got from the reading. Um, I find it's really helpful to just kind of either type it up as you go and kind of keep or write it down as you go. So you have your own little log or journal so that when you get ready to write your papers, you know, you, you have your own questions to refer, to refer to. Well, what was I thinking? What did that, you know, what did that lecture or that reading mean to me? So... But that's pretty much what the posts are for. Um, and like I said, when she's grading them, she's not going to be like, well, that's not what you should have got from that reading. She's not, you know, she, we, she really, really, really does just want us to think and tell other people what we thought. Um, I don't know how many papers there are in the class. Okay. So yeah, here I can't go. scroll down. Okay. Um, there they go. No tardy thing. Okay, there's just actually I only have one research paper and then one final paper. And so every once in a while I might make a post longer because usually I have more papers than this. Yeah. Um, uh, but what, what I think is because it's such a small class that the posting and the conversation is going to be a lot more intense. And so then, does that make sense, Alicia? But everyone's up, oh, you're muted again. Um, yeah. Whoops. Okay. So that, anyway, um, that's how we do that. If you are considering majoring or minoring, keep track of your papers because we have to look at them when we do our assessment. Um, this is how I work the course time commitment. Um, so it's two hours of studying per hour of class. Um, and if, I mean, I do give a lot of readings because I've taught it enough times that I keep bringing in new things. But all I want you to do is give me two hours of your time, right? And you don't have to read absolutely everything if literally it's taking you four hours to read it. Um, but I do think just for me to be sending stuff to you 
just for you to know that you're supposed to be applying this to what you see around you. Um, the honor code, I give you particular um, criteria, but it's nothing, you know, I don't think it's too different from everybody else, um, but you can check that. Now, any other questions about the posts? The posts is, you know, you just coming, I'm gonna call on each of you at the beginning of the class. What did you get out of the reading? And then I'll talk a little more and then I might say, well, what's your reaction to that? Or um, like there's, there's more than one part of each reading. Uh, the reading for today had an essay by well, uh, Seneca and some students in Southeast Asia applying it to their lives. And then I had another section about Mark Zuckerberg's uh, sister wrote a whole book about how stoicism is being corrupted by really sexist men in the US. So, so you know, that's the kind of stuff where I like to show you that it applies. And then I like to ask each of you, well, how did you react to the original reading? And then how did you react to the news uh, application of it? And then also, if you could bring your own application or bring your own news article. And if you think of a news article ahead of time, you can forward it and I'll post it. Um, all right, so, uh, here are, let's see, here's the paper rubric. Um, so Mike. Alicia, do you want to talk a little bit about your experience with how I write papers? And I got to finish making my granddaughter's life. One minute, Dr. Vic. Um, can you hear me? Yep. I just looked over the syllabus and it said um, there was a part about tardy. I just want to remind you that um, I would have French. Yes, that's okay. So that's I'll be a few right. minutes late. Yeah, that's okay, okay Warren. And so, the meeting okay. days are Monday and Wednesday or Wednesday and Friday? Monday and Wednesday, except okay. this. Um, um, this week this, we may do Friday. Yeah, we may because do, we, didn't we have haven't school. really met. Yeah, I think this week we'll do Friday if that's okay. Okay. Just so everyone's on board. Yeah. All right. Um, all right, so Alicia, why don't you talk for a minute about your idea of what the paper thing says and what I actually do, okay? Okay. Okay. Um, a lot of students think, and y'all might have thought this at one point in time or still think it, that different teachers require different things for papers. And I mean, they may have different expectations, but there's some basic components of the paper that should still be the same. And that's really what she's mapped out right here. Your thesis should be clear. Um, and like, now Ivy, you may not relate to this very well, but Warren, when they tell us, you know, what's a good research question, you don't want the answer to be just yes or no. It's kind of the same thing with the thesis. You want the thesis to be something that you know somebody needs to think about somebody has to really apply themselves to this and use critical thought to answer or to come up with their perspective on your thesis um the arguments that you make can't just be unfounded and based on personal feelings and stuff i mean a lot of it is subjective. This is how I see this, but it doesn't need to just be, I don't know, unre well, it says, unre it says reasonable. It doesn't need to be unreasonable. Like, I think the world would be better if pigs could fly. That is not going to ever be a good argument. Um, each of your arguments need to point back towards your thesis. Um, 
Right. Your references, and this is where keeping your little post journal. Mm -hmm. Of course, since we're posting online, I guess you could scroll back through all of the posts, but um, any of your readings that you think you might use for your own paper or include in your own idea of what a healthy psyche is or how you could come to develop a healthy psyche, you can write down. Well, you know, there's a there's a quote on page six of this certain book that I want to use, and then always make sure you cite it. I'm pretty sure she uses MLA. And when she was grading my paper, she doesn't tear them apart. They do have to be, you know, pretty grammatically correct. Um, and even at that, if there's a couple miss ups, she, she'll just oh, add a comma there or whatever. She won't suggest that you change your idea. She may say, oh, well, I thought this. But just be honest to what you really think. Don't make your paper to align it with what you think Dr. Beck believes or what you think one of the classmates believes. It needs to be what you think. That's what she's talking about, intellectual honesty. Um, it needs to, it just needs to flow well. So, Warren, I know you've had a lot of paper writing. Um, Ivy, I don't know how much you have to write for your art major, but I know everybody has to have the uh, either take or pass the composition classes. Um, yeah, I've had like Compton philosophy and you okay, know, all okay. those classes like that. Okay, so if if you haven't had a professor who has said, like especially in your comp classes, who has found an issue with like the way you organize your paper, and, you know, if they're like, if they think your papers make sense and they flow well, then you'll be okay in this class also. She's just trying to get you to be well-spoken on paper as well as when you're talking to other people. Alexa, off. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Carmina, my granddaughter, she has her own Alexa. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there it is. And when, <laughs> when it's time for school to start. I guess her mom geared the whole thing up, whatever. Ah, yes. We live in a new world. Yes. So <laughs> we certainly do. You know, when I was growing up, the question was, well, I mean, do the two girls really need a TV in the bedroom that they share? Yeah. <laughs> Not. <laughs> okay, oh, does guys. my two-year-old get a cell phone? <laughs> Actually, my kids, we didn't have TV. Ah. Yeah. yeah. We, um, for most of, most of my life, actually all of my life at home, uh, we had one TV and it was in the family room. Yeah. Well, all right. Here's a funny story. <laughs> my sister married a guy whose job was to manage the family fortune. And my brother was making 350 bucks an hour for his law services. So I was the poor kid in the family. So we kept getting these hand-me-downs. So people felt sorry for us and they gave us a TV. <laughs> anyway, that's another thing. I would have been, you know, give me something else. <laughs> give me something I could really, really use. <laughs> I know, my kid thought it was great. <laughs> okay, so, so I want your thesis to be important right not for you um and then you're it's clear and then it's um you show that you understand the material right um so i guess since i'm not assigning i'm only assigning a research paper and a final paper that this would be uh also true of your posts that you um I'll grade them on, you know, the sophistication level of your thoughts 
not the content of your thoughts, but did you read the material well enough so you understand it? Um, so you have three reactions to the reading and then you pick out, you know, which quotes seem most important to you. And then um, when you're participating in the class, you can draw meaningful conclusions. Um, and then in a paper, the textual references, examples that you give good examples that when you study something you don't like, you know, because there will be things you don't like, um, that did you give, do you show that you understand it? Um, and then in the posts that you, you know, you write decently. Um, and then, so again, this, this uh, it's also true of your research paper and also your final paper that you have, uh, it's high quality, it applies. And then you have these union of reason and faith and the qualities of an intellect of a, a liberally minded person, right? Okay, so that's the papers. Then there's the speaking rubric. There's four things I look for. If it's organized, the way you deliver it, if you know your, knowledge, your stuff, and it has a central message. So that's that. Um, and this is the, these are the things that will be posted for each day. So you have the number of the class. So for Friday, we'll just do stoicism. We'll do all of that. It's already posted. And um, that'll be it, because I think some people have to go to class now. Um, do you have any questions? OK, so look above here. Here's where everything's posted for Friday. Um, do you have any questions? So the um, stuff that we read, we're, do we're talking about that Friday. Yep. OK. Had you already read it, Ivy? Yeah, I uh, read the unjust suffering and I read a couple other ones except for the student one. Okay, good. Well, I think you'll like the student one. The girls are growing up under unbelievable circumstances and they're having to reflect on that. So we um, can really change our opinion of our own suffering or, or give it a new, shed a new light on it. Oh my gosh, I was recording this whole thing. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> oh 